With visualization, it's important to sort the elements that you put into your chart. For example, have a look at these two bar charts. Which one of those do you find easier to read? If you are like most people, then you will find the sorted bar chart easier to read. The simple act of sorting makes the chart so much better and it's an crucial step because it makes your bar chart easier to read because the reader will immediately know what is the largest value, what is the lowest value, and this can make your chart so much better. And today I'm going to show you how to create such a chart with ggplot. And once you have learned how to sort bar charts, I will also show you how to sort all kinds of other elements in your ggplot so that you can always put some order into your charts. And before we dive into this week's video, let me tell you that you can find the corresponding blog post via the link in the description below. And with that said, let's dive into the video. So we are in our studio and I've already set up a new document and a first code chunk for this project. We're loading the tidyverse and we're setting a theme to theme minimal so that all of our plots look nice. And also notice that I have increased the base size in theme minimal here so that the fonts are large enough and use this specific font family. Okay, so let's begin by creating a new code chunk and in there we can throw in the code for our first bar chart. We start out by having a look at our data set that we are using for this bar chart. In this case, it's the GT cars data set from the GT package. It's a rather small data set, but it contains a couple of measurements for different cars. And in here in this MFR column, there is information on the manufacturers in this data set. So let's count those and check how many different manufacturers we have in here. So this is the data set that we want to use for our bar chart. Let's send this to ggplot. Here I've simply mapped the manufacturer labels to the Y axis and the number that we have counted to the x-axis and then we call gm call and this will give us our first basic bar chart now this isn't sorted at all but it's our first chart that we want to tweak so that it looks nicer and one of the first things before we even begin starting to sort this data set is to add a couple of labels here and we do this by the labs function and on the x-axis we simply use counts on the y-axis we use element blank to get rid of this MFR label because everyone knows that these will likely be manufacturers here. So these are brand names. They are well known enough that we don't need a label here. And in the title, we simply put in the number of manufacturers in the data set. Kind of generic, but still every plot should have a title. Now, as I've said in the intro, we want to sort these bars here. And it's easy to think that we can just arrange our data set to sort by and so this is our data set here it's it's sorted doesn't matter if we sort in decreasing or increasing order it won't work anyway but it's easy to think that if we use a range then if we sort our data set ggplot will do what we want but if we pass this into ggplot we get the exact same thing so sorting our data set didn't have any effect at all because ggplot doesn't listen to the sorting of the data set so it doesn't care in which order you have the rows in here. But what it will listen for is if this column here is a factor variable. You see in R we have factor variables which are a special data type to store categorical variables that have an intrinsic order. So what we could do is use our data set and transform this column to a factor instead of having it as a character. And the way to do that is to use our sorted data set and add a mutate call on top of this where we target the MFR column and in there we use the factor function which will transform whatever we pass in here to a factor variable. So this here simply transforms this column to a factor variable. In the data set if you execute this you will see that the only real difference here is that it's a factor variable now. And with that, we can pass this to ggplot to check if this conversion to factor helped. Now, unfortunately, this didn't help at all because we forgot one crucial thing. And that thing can be found in the documentation of this factor function. In there, we see that there is an argument called levels. And this levels argument determines the intrinsic order of this factor variable that we create here. So we need to specify the levels. And since we know that in our data set, all of this 
is already sorted, we can simply use this column here as the levels for our factor variable. So in here we put MFR again. And finally, our chart is sorted. To recap, what we did here was to sort our data set and then use the mutate call to turn our character column into a factor column. And in there we have set the levels to this column here because it is already in the correct order. You see the vector that you pass to the levels argument, the order of the stuff that is in here will determine the intrinsic order of this factor variable here. And since we have sorted before, this column is in the order that we want. And therefore, this factor has the correct intrinsic order. And therefore, once we pass this to ggplot, our bar chart will be sorted. Right now, this is a two-step process. We first have to sort our data with a range and then transform the column that we want to use in ggplot to a factor variable. But we can actually do this in one step. So let's get rid of the sorting for us and let us use fct reorder. This function works a little bit different because this levels here is not something we have to specify manually now you have to tell this fct reorder function by which quantity to order the factor variable now. So what needs to be the order? And of course, we want to have it ordered by the number of observations that we have in here. So we simply state, okay, order this uh, MFR column by what you find in the column n. And this will then determine the intrinsic order of the factor variable. And if we pass it to ggplot, you will see that the result once again is a sorted bar chart. In FCT reorder, you could also put in descending to true if you wanted to. This will change the order from increasing to decreasing. Here we don't need this. It's just nice to know that if you want to sort it the other way around, use this additional argument in FCT reorder. Here I've given you a sort of simplistic way of explaining what FCT reorder does. Most of the time you will be perfectly fine by using this function just like I've described it here. But sometimes you need to understand the underlying mechanisms of FCT reorder to sort other things in your charts. To demonstrate this, let us build another chart and then I will show you how to sort stuff in that chart. For this very purpose, I have created another data set from the Parma Penguins data set, which looks like this. Don't worry about the code at all. I just use this to show you this is the data that we want. So this is the Parma Penguins data set. And for each species of the penguins that we have in that data set, we can see their minimum weight and their maximum weight in the weight column. Okay, this is our data set. Do not worry at all what we did here. If you're interested, feel free to check out what this code does. Basically, it's doing a summary and then rearranging the data with pivot longer. But that's not the point here. Let's just use this to create a new chart. We're going to take this data set and then we're going to pass it to ggplot. So what we're going to create from this data set here is basically a dumbbell plot. If you don't know that name, just have a look what we'll plot and then you will understand why it's called dumbbell plot. To create such a dumbbell plot, we first need to map the weights to the x-axis, the species to the y-axis, and then we're going to add a GM point layer to create points. We're also going to make them a little bit bigger so that we can see, okay, this is the minimum weight, this is the maximum weight, and the same thing can be seen in each of the rows for each of the species. At this point, this is a so-called dot plot. To make this into a true dumbbell plot is to use a GM line layer in there as well and connect the dots. So this is a typical dumbbell plot now. And just like before, we can tweak this plot by adding a couple of labels. Actually, we could even make the points a little bit larger so that they are more visible. Nice. This is a dumbbell plot and it shows you the range of body weight for different penguin species. And it's a nice overview for the weights. And we can even see that it seems to be sorted here by these values here. So the maximum weight is sorted here. We can see that these points are not in some weird order, but they are in ascending order. But what if we wanted to have the minimum in increasing order? How can we sort this stuff now? And the trick here again is to use FCT reorder to make our variable that we pass to the Y axis into a factor variable. So this means in our min max weights data set, we need to 
transform this species here to a factor variable. It, it actually is a factor already. That's because it is stored like this in the Parma Penguins data set. But we want to change the intrinsic order of this factor variable to sort these three dumbbells differently. And by applying what we've learned before, we know that we need to pass our data set to mutate. And in there, we can transform the column that we want by putting it into FCT reorder and using the species in there too. And we know that we want to sort by this weight column here. But now things are a little bit tricky. Before, in our example, we simply could use this end column to sort our manufacturers here. That's because for each entry, for each manufacturer, we had exactly one value. So that was kind of easy to sort by this. Just check which one is larger and then do the sorting of this factor variable. But in our new data set, for each species, remember we want to sort the species so that the dumbbells are sorted here, we have actually two observations, the minimum weight and the maximum weight. Same thing for Gen2, same thing for GinStrap. So let's check what FCT reorder does when we simply don't mind this difference and apply it. It actually works. It doesn't give you an error and shows you, hey, you have two values for each entry. How do we sort this? It somehow consolidates these two observations for each species into something by which it can sort. And this is the exact same thing we need to change in order to sort our dumbbells however we like. And a good way to find out what FCT reorder does or how it does that is to check the documentation and check that, all right, there is a third argument which we have never used and it uses a fun argument, which sounds fun, I guess, and it's defaults to median. And if we check in the documentation, it says that n is a summary function and it takes one vector and returns a single value. So what this fun argument does here, so let's put this into our FCT reorder, is that it seems to summarize what we have in here. So for each species that we want to sort here, it checks the weight and then it uses this function that summarizes all of the data. So in this case, for each species, there are two data entries and consolidates them into one. By default, it simply uses the median, but we could use something else. So let's just put this in here as well. This won't change anything, but this is how FCT reorder works without us putting this stuff in here. And it has already sorted our bar differently. Let's check if we comment out this line these two switch their order. So this already did the trick, but this was kind of an accident because apparently the median is working here. To understand how to change this function here so that it does what we want, we need to understand what's going on with this function. And basically what this function does is just the same thing that you do in summarize. So what you do in summarize would be to use the median here. Let's call this calculated median and then use this median function and apply it to the weight. And then we can do this for each species. For each species now, this summarize call will calculate the median of the data that's, that is in here. This is the median of these two values. This is the median of these two values. You're probably familiar with what summarize does. Once you have a summary like this, then you can easily sort the species by the values that were computed here. And the medians that we have calculated here mean that chin strap has the lowest median, then it's Adderley, and then it's Gen2. And we can see this in the chart here. First it's chin strap, then it's Adderley, and then it's Gen2. So to tweak the order in our GG plot, we just have to figure out what is the correct function that we need to use basically in a summary summarize call to sort our data. And since we these values here, the left corners are the minimum, we could also use the minimum here. And then I shouldn't call this calculated median. Let's call this calculated minimum. And then we know, okay, since strap has the lowest minimum, then it's Adderley, then it's Gen2, and this will be the order that we want to have. Okay, so we could put this in here. This is basically what FCT reorder does. It does all of this calculation to compute the, the summary and then it sorts 
the species or whatever you want to sort by the values that you computed in your summary statistics. It just does all of this in one go. And therefore, if we put this in here, our chart didn't change because this is already sorted into ascending order. We could again put descending to false, uh, to true, of course. It's and then it would be sorted the other way around. The left points are sorted now. If you wanted to sort by the right points, then you would have to use the maximum function here because these values represent the maximum weights. And again, you could remove this descending stuff if you want to sort it this way. Okay, so this is how you change this fun argument in FCT reorder to change the sorting of your elements in your chart according to some summary statistic that you compute from your data. This is the kind of thing you need to tweak when you want to sort your elements based on multiple observations like we have here. There are two observations for each species. In our previous example, it didn't matter at all if we specify the fun argument at all because there's always only one value for each group that you want to sort because if there's only one value then you the median maximum minimum or whatever else you use to summarize will always be the same and this is why once you move beyond this simple setting where you have only one observation you will have to tweak this fun argument and then you can sort everything that you want in your chart all right, we've made it. This was a bit tricky, I think. If you have never worked with factors or FCT reorder, this can be quite confusing. Let me know in the comments if you have any more questions. And of course, don't forget that you can read up on all of these things in the blog post that you will find via the link in the description. In any case, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.